Hello, my name is Juan Altafula. I'm a neurosurgical resident uh, from Hospital Santo Tomas, Panama City, Panama, and also an anatomy research fellow here at SSF. Today, we are going to learn how to do an uh, emergency burrow hole craniotomy and a an, uh, scalp nerve block. So, to begin, uh, as a education example. You are on an island in a private party and uh, one of your friends decides to climb a palm tree to grab a coconut. So then he, f he falls, hits his head. You as a medical student uh, go over to him and examine him. Uh, initially he's okay with a Glasgow score of 15. No evident a deterioration, just a little bit of swelling on the right side of the head. Uh, you go back to the party, 10, 15 minutes in, uh, your friend starts to deteriorate, he develops, he starts to speak nonsense, then become lethargic, and finally he stops responding to stimuli. You go and examine him again, and now you see that he has blown a right poo-poo. Uh, in other words, he dilated the uh, right pupil. So you're gonna have to perform a burr hole craniotomy, suspecting of a epidural or subdural hematoma. First, there are several sites where you can do burr holes, but the first burr hole will always go ipsilateral to the bone pupil and over the temporal bone. So you get a scalpel, you do a incision right over the skin all the way through muscle onto the bone. You decollate some part, some of the temporalis muscle and expose the temporal bone. Then you get a drill, position it over the bone and start drilling until you feel it has crossed into a softer part. That will indicate that the drill has crossed the temporal bone and reached the epidural space. If you are facing an epidural hematoma, you'll immediately access a blood clot, which you can evacuate or release pressure over it. And if you don't see any bleeding or uh, blood cuts, you will continue doing the subsequential burr holes. The next burr hole you're gonna do is will be in the temporal side of the contralateral uh, temporal bone. The next one will be a frontal. You just need to remember that stay away from the midline and right anterior to the coronal suture. So the measured one will be almost around like two finger breadths lateral and two finger breadths anterior to the coronal suture. In a normal person, you could palpate the coronal suture as a depression over the frontal bone. And, and the third borehole, if you don't find any of the bleeding or hematoma in any of, of these sites, will be a, a parietal one right over the convexity. So we will have a temporal, frontal, and parietal one. And also the contralateral temporal one. Two things, because when the patient reaches the hospital and is taken to the OR, you will be able to connect all these boreholes to perform a, a more extensive craniotomy if it's needed. And they represent the most common bleeding sites inside the skull. So that will be it. Thank you very much.